Sherrod Delong. Um, I grew up here in Wenatchee. Um, I, uh, I went to high school here. I, you know, was pretty, I wasn't born here, but I was raised here. Um, and then after high school, I kind of took off and had to live a bunch of different places. And I lived in New York City for a while, and I lived in Los Angeles. And I kind of just had to go have a bunch of experiences. I have always been interested in the arts and always made art, but I never really had any like strong opinions or experiences or things to paint about or think about. <laughs> I had decided to go to truck driving school and I got a CDL and that was a very interesting experience. <laughs> um, but then after that, I got a job driving for the post office as a postal contract driver. So I would drive, um, at first I would drive a bunch of different routes, like up, you know, up to Highway 97, but also to like Moses Lake, and but a lot of rural areas around Wenatchee. And um, it was always very, very early in the morning and often really beautiful. Uh, eventually, I just was driving only the Highway 97 route, and, which I still think is a very beautiful drive, um, and especially at the time in the morning when I was going, because I would always see the sun come up, and the, rep the, rep the repetition of the experience um, drew out a lot of my favorite places. I'd wake up at about 3.30, 3.45, and then I would drive to North Wenatchee, and then I'd be in my truck and load up the truck at about 4.45, 4.50, and then be on the road um, through snow or rain or sleet or <laughs> whatever the post office says that they, you know, endure. <laughs> and it was such a very varying uh, bits of terrain and uh, in the summer, the sun would be coming up so much earlier, and and it was always the sunrise that was more beautiful because the mountains are on the western side of the river, and it kind of blocks the sunsets. So it was very mostly always the sunrise that um, would capture me, and then I'd wait all day. It's about a nine hour layover, and then I'd drive back. I'd load up the mail from Okanagan and then drive back to Wenatchee. I'd leave Okanagan about four o'clock, and then drive back to Wenatchee at, and get there at about 6.30. I never had in mind that I was going to do a show. I was just painting these places uh, for, for their own sake, and kind of, kind of honoring just the everyday things I would see in my own life. Kind of a way of honoring just kind of my own life as insignificant as it might have seemed. And yeah, oftentimes I would, the weather and the light, and it would all line up in this amazing way that would inspire me and bring me a sense of assurance and beauty and comfort um, on these lonely drives that, um, you know, that were, and lonely is the best way I could describe them. Is, um, uh, it, and that's one of the things I liked about the, the job of driving, uh, was being alone with your thoughts. So there were these moments that I thought were inspiring and almost like gifts in themselves. And I would take photos, I would sketch them, I would, uh, and I never had a whole lot of time to do that because I was on a schedule to deliver the mail in bulk to these small towns. During the day, I would wait up in Okanagan um, and at, had a lot of time in the middle of the day. And so I started by painting a lot of watercolor paintings because it's so easy to 
bring those supplies with you and um, and so it it kind of started there I didn't get into the oil painting until later but that medium also uh, became part of my process and it's just grown from there I just um, I just have kept moving forward on it so there were many times that I had the impulse to stop, but then the moment was gone. And you're already way further down the road and that sight that you saw is behind you and you know that you're never gonna see that again in that way. Um, the weather's never gonna be the same and the, all the elements that combine to make that moment aren't going to be the same again and you do experience some level of regret for not pausing and appreciating it but I would just make a mental notes to myself that if I ever see something like that again if I ever that I'm going to stop and um, take it in and at least appreciate it and try to document it and interact with that moment um, as much as I can so if I miss something, uh, I would just sort of make a mental note and vow to never miss it again. <laughs> I was always on the road during the transition moments of night and day, mornings and evenings. So that is an aspect to this show too, of that moment of change. Um, and the colors that happen in the sky bet uh, between the sun coming in and the, and the nighttime leaving and vice versa. And there's so many beautiful layers to the colors um, and so many uh, incredible ways the light shines on everything. Um, and that idea too, you're particularly more aware of time and how quickly time actually goes. My painting style, I'm really influenced by uh, a lot of the painters in America and Europe up through the turn of the century. Um, up until perhaps like the 1930s. Um, I liked their fascination with that question of beauty and finding beauty in, in the everyday. Uh, and, I, and I also f feel I'm very inspired by romantic painters like Whistler and Turner um, and their fascination with the sky and light and I just uh, always gravitated towards those painters in that era, um, going to ga uh, galleries and looking at lots and lots of paintings. Like you kind of eventually find out what calls to you and and what um, what way of exp of expression you find to be, you know, the most effective and and the one that speaks to you speaks to you. Um, so I always appreciated kind of that rough quality um, that a lot of those artists had and the honesty of the moment. Um, there's a real appreciation for the paint itself and um, I don't try to hide uh, that th these are paintings and I like to enjoy painting for what it is. I don't try to make my paintings too controlled or photographic and I don't try, like to make them too abstract. So it's just a place that I've found that makes me happy. <laughs> my style kind of has evolved just from listening to myself and my own impressions of where how much work I want to put in to things and how where I want to put my focus and it all has like a lot of subtle little decisions that happen in the process 
Um, but you just keep feeling it out and until it feels right. And um, it stays pretty mysterious that way. <laughs> I started out when I first moved back to Wenatchee working only with watercolor. And it was really wonderful. It, it was a, for some reason it just worked out and it felt right. And um, I liked the portability of it and the, and the spontaneity of it. Um, I no longer felt the need to edit myself too much or feel that I ever made like a big mistake or something. I would just kind of try to keep um, appreciating what the paint itself does. Uh, and just, yeah, over the years, um, allowing that process to happen um, has been very rewarding um, and enjoyable. I guess I got into oils eventually um, because I like the almost um, sculptural aspect and the texture of it. And I like the ability to mix colors so specifically. Um, and that's, that is a much more deliberate process. You don't just let the paints just do what they want and appreciate that as much. Um, and they're both wonderful mediums. Uh, and I'm still learning so much about how to use them effectively and how to better express myself. What would you say to someone who's thinking about picking up a paintbrush but hasn't yet? Just go for it. Just get whatever gets you started. Just uh, find an idea of something that motivates you. Um, anything from your life. Like paint, you know, the, the silverware on your table or paint like a, you know, the the food you're eating, I don't know, anything. Like, paint uh, something, like a pair of shoes that you like wearing, or uh, something from your life that means something to you. And you can start there, and then don't beat yourself up. Um, once you've started, and you've, once you've done something, you're kind of like on a journey. And if you keep it going, then it becomes very interesting and rewarding. Uh, but yeah, pay attention to those moments in your life, even little moments that call to you. And those are all moments that uh, you can paint. You can paint anything. <laughs> like, um, but I would suggest picking a moment from your own life that, um, that says something personal. There's no right way to get started. Just whatever gets you started. Just doing the work is everything. I hope they experience some of the, uh, some of that quiet beauty that I experience. Um, and I hope they can look at my work and have their own thoughts as they stare at the scenes the way I had my own thoughts um, when I was captured by these scenes to begin with. And, and I think even if you can't take a photo or paint it or something, just stopping and being there is uh, important. Um, I, felt, I, I felt that painting these scenes um, really honored that process um, and and I got to participate in those colors that I loved and the scenes that I loved and I got to express in a more intimate way what what those experiences were I, on my drives I saw a lot of other like uh, orchard workers and um, other truck drivers uh, making their deliveries. So a lot of people that work hard experience the early morning. <laughs> um, 
but it's a time I've come to appreciate for sure because of this whole experience. And I'm glad I was able to turn it into something um, that, I'm glad I was able to turn it into something uh, that I think communicates some of my sense of beauty and my appreciation for my own life and, the, and this area. I was never, I've never been a morning person at all. <laughs> and I've been very grateful for my job and um, it's really put me through the experience of being a, a morning person. I never thought I would see so many sunrises. <laughs> <laughs>